also playing as the kids are actually going to commentate. And they're going to have, we'll have sideline reporters and all that. Um, with the scope, I'm just getting the sideline. You know, like, you know, just getting used to it. It's, it's going to be tough. That's one thing they haven't really figured out, because you're getting kids from all walks of life to sign up for these classes and say, all right, go do a football game. Yeah. Well, heck, I don't know anything about football. Yeah. So, so you almost need somebody else to volunteer to do it. And then, like you said, have a sideline reporter or yeah. something along that line, and then have other projects for them to do. Coach, can I see a highlight real quick? I'm going to highlight some of those teams you talked about he scheduled. Test, test. Test. Turn it up a little bit. Can you hear me? I can hear you a little bit. Uh, I, hear, I hear you pretty good. How about, how about now? How about now? I hear you good, but I don't know. That, uh, probably give it a little bit more juice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's, that, that's better. That, that brings us both up. Yeah. Sweet. And let me slide this one down. That, Good. that cuts everything. I think that's go maybe up just a tad. That's perfect right there. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Same? Yeah, actually, absolutely. Good. Look at Medvic. He's looking sharp over there. Chuck, can you hear me good? I guess it doesn't need to be too close to your mouth. Pretty good mic. Quite the performance.
played uh, the Congress. The Congress had beat Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel had a girl named Boss. Uh, who's 5'7 guard, scored 1,000 points. Now I can. A little bit. Background. Now I can. Test, test. better that's better test test blank perfect all right you hear me okay John I can hear you how about me I hear you good I feel like my sometimes my mic gets too far away from my mouth but well all right that's pretty good right there I think yeah, I can hear it. Fine. As long as you can hear me clear, I'm good. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep the volume up. People listening, they can always turn it down. Correct. You know, if they, yeah. it, it's frustrating to be uh, have it all the way up and not be able to hear. Yeah, better off, be, better uh, too high than too low right. for sure. Let's see, capacity in this gym's uh, just uh, under 2,000, I believe, isn't it? I thought it was, uh, you know, I thought it was 1,600. Is that what it is? I don't know. You know, it's somewhere around here. But... Um, be nice, uh, nice to see it full sometime. Yeah, sure would be. See, so situated here. I guess the uh, the most important things they have in front of us are uh, the two rosters with the numbers. That'll be the hardest thing to know for, as far as names are yeah, concerned. I yeah, I'll be fine with Mascuti's kids, but right, right, right. When we get to the 
triad kids, it could be a problem. What, what do you think? I, you know, I was thinking we probably shouldn't go live with us until about six minutes or so before tip. Oh, yeah. Give us about a five or six minute. Oh, yeah. I mean, that may be a little hot. I mean, uh, you know, I tell you one thing uh, that uh, some people listening might want to hear. I'm, you know, I don't want to mind. I mean, when the cheerleaders get together, yeah. I mean, we can talk about how they, uh, you know, they were uh, yeah. fourth at state. Right. Yep. And, by and one by one tenth of a point. Oh, yeah, two one hundredths of a point. Yeah. It's live. Check. You hear me okay? Yep. All right. Check <laughs> one, two. I'm good here. Okay. Maybe up a tad. Okay, bringing it okay. up. Perfect. I'm good right there. That's, yeah, that's yeah. perfect for us. I think um, Mascuda's going to go with the senior. Laid the starting lineup tonight. Not their normal starters. Are we good? Okay. He's going to call. And he's going down to log in right now and to, and, and to let us know if it's good or not. Yeah, we could talk about the cheerleaders. What's that? Okay, how about now? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, mo, meeny, miny, meeny. Test, test. Testing. How about now? Checking. Good Checking. to go. Got us both. Scott Battis, check one, two. Okay.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 2012-2013 Senior Night. This evening we're going to chance to recognize the members of the boys' basketball team, the cheer squad, the dance team, and the wrestling squad. Our next senior is 
Marshall Moore. Marshall's assistant, Stacy and Fawn Moore. And next we have Matt Olson. Matt's the son of Roger Olson and Lisa Olson. And now let's move on to the senior members of the cheer squad. Our first senior is Kelsey Bryant. Kelsey is the daughter of Bob and Brenda Bryant. Next, we have Bailey Christman. <laughs> Bailey's the daughter of Cindy and Romero Martinez. Our next senior is Kaylee Hubert. <laughs> Kaylee's the daughter of Matt Hubert and Agnes Hubert. Our next senior is Kayla Keck. Kayla's daughter, Bill Keck and Amy Keck. Our next senior cheer squad member is Jordan Rosh. Jordan is the son of Larry and Cheryl Rosh. Next we have Ryan Richter. Ryan is the son of Joel Richter and brother of Ashley Richter. Our next senior is Ileana Salabrigas. Ileana is the daughter of Julio Salabrigas and Martha Garcia. And our last senior church squad member is Taylor Schmidt. Taylor's daughter of Bob and Shannon Schmidt. Next we'll move on to our senior dance squad members. First we have Anissa Bradley. Anissa's the daughter of Sandra Bradley and Chartique Bradley. Our next senior is Caitlin Coe. Caitlin's the daughter of Jennifer Heaney and Daniel Heaney. Our next senior is Julie Locko. Julie's the daughter of Gary and Teresa Locko. And next we have Bridget Lingelbach. Bridget is the daughter of Margie Eureka and Steve Lingelbach. And our next senior is Kalia Parker. Kalia is the daughter of Marcella and Vicky Parker. Our next senior is Samantha Wilhelm. <laughs> Samantha is the daughter of Anna and Wayne Wilhelm. Next we have Madeline Zinzer. <laughs> Madeline is the daughter of Mark and Jennifer Borges.
testing. Test, test. Test, test, one, two. How about, how you doing? Good. Good. Hello, welcome to Mascuda High School in Mascuda, Illinois for tonight's Mississippi Valley Conference matchup. Between the visiting Triad Knights who come into the game tonight with a record of 5-19, and 1-7 and seven in the Mississippi Valley Conference. And the Mascuda Indians with a record of 9-15 and 4-5 and and in the NBC. Alongside my partner, John Hinkle, I'm Scott Battis. Ready to bring you the action tonight here on a, in front of a pretty good crowd, John. When, uh, Scott, I'm excited. I've seen it. Absolutely. I'm excited. Uh, earlier we were talking about capacity of this facility or being in the neighborhood of 1,600, and I'd say we're probably about uh, oh, two-fifths of the way there. We probably have an attendance of about 500. But for those of you that are listening um, and watching, uh, you can check us out on ihsa.tv slash mascuda. ihsa.tv slash mascuda. That'll get us up on your uh, on your computer in your home. Yeah, John, let's talk a little bit about the matchup tonight. I mean, you got two teams probably not where they want to be record-wise at this point in the season, if you'd ask either head coach. But nevertheless, an important game for both teams as they get you get ready for regional play next week. And, uh, you know, uh, as, as teams battle down the stretch here, the last thing you want to do is hit a long skid before you get into tournament play. And, and both teams have an opportunity tonight to get back on track as they finish up here and, and head into that part of the season. Yeah, that's exactly right, Scott, especially uh, making a statement during the conference contest, which is always important. has a little bit more spice uh, spice on it uh, than uh, uh, a normal game, although you want to win anything you can. But at this time of the season, I think you're exactly right. You want to start that winning streak and uh, let it continue as long as possible. Yeah, I agree. should have a good one. I think it's uh, uh, two teams whose coaches are – or uh, certainly have identified what they need to get better at as the season winds down. We got to talk to both coaches before the game. Uh, obviously, we appreciate both of them sitting down with us. And, uh, uh, you know, both pointed out kind of the same thing. You know, they uh, uh, have really struggled with consistency. But, you know, talking to Coach Reynolds, uh, uh, the head coach of Mascuda, the third-year head coach, uh, he, he's proud of the way his kids play. He thinks they play hard. And, and, and certainly when you got a team where uh, your kids play hard, a lot of good things can happen, and uh, you know, hopefully tonight uh, they can get the thing going. Well, that's absolutely correct. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, regardless of schedules uh, uh, and, and the results of each team's schedules, there's going to be some exciting matchups, I think, especially in the paint uh, between Mascuda's big man uh, King and Moore and uh, Jordan Fe uh, Felax, a 6'4 senior that will be uh, – uh, spending, I'm sure, quite a bit of time in the paint for the Knights tonight. So uh, we'll see how those uh, those young men match up against each other. Yeah, the one thing about, about Mascuda, that as you look at the season, I, I think it's it, it's uh, worth pointing out that uh, certainly a pretty good defensive team at times. Uh, certainly when they fail to shoot the ball well, they struggle. But but they, they stay in a lot of games, and, and, uh, and their defense is part of the reason. I, I, I think offensively, from an offensive standpoint, uh, pretty balanced. They don't really have one guy they like to go to in any big-time situation. They're pretty balanced across the board. King's been good inside at times. Uh, certainly Marshall Moore can score and do some good things. And, you know, uh, with Alex Oldman running the point, he's a smart kid. He knows what he's doing. And, and uh, you know, hopefully they can get some uh, looks tonight to, 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 to get up early on a, on a pretty good team and triad when they have the ball and get a lead. Uh, not a bad team at, at keeping the lead. Right, uh, you got that, Scott. As a matter of fact, uh, talking about the offensive production for the Mascuda Indians, uh, we've got kind of a bracket of uh, big men with Alex King and uh, Marshall Moore that are averaging right around the 10-point mark. And then we've got uh, we've got some uh, mid-range scores and so on. But uh, you know, the uh, I guess the joker in the deck would be uh, Ferris Linwell, who uh, we saw earlier in the season lighted up for 18 points in one game. And uh, so uh, you know, he can um, he can get on a streak and. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, make the other team uh, change their defensive position on uh, the players that are typically our big scorers. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. He, he's, he's an athletic kid that really just causes problems underneath. You know, he, he doesn't necessarily do one thing really well. He just likes to cause problems down there and, and use his big body. And, and hopefully tonight, uh, you know, he continues to improve. I think that's the key with him, as, uh, as Coach Reynolds pointed out. He's improved as the season's gone on. And as a senior on senior night here at Mascuda, uh, you, you hope that you can get a contribution from a kid like that that's about to close out his career here as an Indian. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Ferris was uh, obviously a force in football. Um, he is one of these that's a prototypical raw athlete. He's just uh, he just drips with athletic ability and so on. And uh, you know, it, if he can harness some of that uh, energy, it's uh, it's like Spider-Man's Uncle Ben said. You know, with great responsibility or with great power comes great responsibility, and that that proves true both on the on the football field and the basketball court for Ferris. I couldn't agree more. I think Triad certainly brings uh, uh, athleticism to the table as well. Certainly with uh, Barber there. They're starting quarterback, and he runs a triple option fairly well. You can't be unathletic and play that position with that offense. So certainly they got some athletes on their of their own, and uh, they, they will certainly challenge the Indians as we get ready for uh, the presentation of the colors and our national anthem. So we'll go ahead and uh, drop off to your uh, uh, earwaves for just a moment or two while the national anthem is played, and um, we'll catch you uh, at the opening tip. this evening by senior members of the Vistuda High School Chorus under the direction of Dr. Aaron Knoblock.
Thank you. Welcome to Miss Good High School, the home of the Indians. And tonight's Mississippi Valley Conference Boys Basketball game between the Triad Knights. And for the Mississippi Indians. Ladies and gentlemen, this sportsmanship is the attitude of behavior that exemplifies positive support for the interscholastic program of IHSA member school. Miss Good High School and the IHSA expects everyone in attendance. At any athletic event to show great sportsmanship, and this includes showing respect for opposing players, coaches, and spectators, respecting the integrity and judgment of game officials, and using all the cheers and chants that are supportive of their own team. And now, let's meet the starter lineup for the Triad Knights. Ed Douglas is one junior, number one, Jason Barber. Ed Douglas is one senior, number 24, Jordan. Indians, uh, the starters for Triad tonight, Jason Barber at a guard, Lucas Criley at the other guard, Felax, Jordan Felax, the senior at one forward, Matt Mersinger, number 22, a junior at another forward, in the middle, Jordan Deese, a senior. Let's meet the starting lineups for the Muscoota Indians. Right now, let's start the lineup for your Muscoota Indians. John, the starters for the Indians tonight, the two guards, Matt Olson and Jalen Nelson. Matt Olson making his first start on senior night. Uh, good for him and good for uh, Coach Reynolds letting the seniors play tonight. Uh, Jalen Nelson at the other guard. He's a junior. Marshall Moore, the 6'5 senior. He'll start at forward. The other forward, we talked about him, Ferris Samuel. We're number 24. He's a 6'3 senior. And the guy in the middle tonight, Alex King, who's been pretty consistent all year long, number 32. He's a senior. And certainly tonight, he could be a key in the middle uh, if he continues to play the way he has on the stretch. Yeah, I see that too, Scott. As a matter of fact, uh, it wouldn't it be great if uh, King really would have a breakout game now and really establish his presence as a big man uh, going into this postseason. Uh, he's been right at knocking on that door uh, on occasion and stuff, but uh, we're looking to real, for a real complete effort from Alex tonight. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Coach uh, Reynolds is as well. You bet. Well, I'm looking forward to it, John. This should be fun. First time on the... Uh, on the mic for us, I know, and the first time that we've been able to bring this uh, IHSA TV broadcast in full to our Mosquito fans. So looking forward to it, and here we go. Moore wins the tip to Lemuel, and Jalen uh, Nelson controls the ball at the top of the key. To Olsen on the left wing, to King at the top of the key. He's pressured by... Barber, the ball's knocked loose, and King maintains possession down on the wing. Up to Marshall Moore at the top. The shot for three is no good. Rebound. Triad. Jason Barber. That Jordan Deese controls the ball at the point. Nice possession for Mascuda. They worked uh, worked the half-court offense and so on. Had an open open look, just didn't drop. That was a good open look, and uh, hopefully those fall later. That was a good look at the basket. That's 22, Matt Merskner down low on the post for Triad for the first bucket of tonight's game. It's 2-0, Triad with 7.15 to play in the first quarter. 
King with the ball. Back out to Marshall Moore with a jump shot from about 17 feet, and it's good. Ties the game at two with seven minutes in the first quarter. And John, that's a good start from a scooter. They needed a bucket to kind of equalize things. It is. A big guy that can hit from the outside is going to really break down that, uh, that defense on the inside and open up something more for the big men from a scooter. Three ball from Triad. And Deese is no good. Rebound to Jalen Nelson from the scooter. He takes the ball all the way into the lane, then back out over to Moore. Moore controls it over to Nelson. Inside to Lemuel. Lemuel loses control of the ball to Felax from Triad, and the other way we go. Turnovers cannot happen if we want to stay in the ball game tonight, John. No, no, they sure couldn't. As a matter of fact, Felax, uh, obviously we know about his offensive prowess and stuff, but he's, he's a force on defense as well. Setting screens on the outside, blocking up that middle for the Mosquito. Yeah, he's a big, thick body in there. Triad maintains possession. Back out to the top of the key, and they want to slow things down just like they said. Felix battles inside, kicks it back out to Carly for three. It's no good. Rebound Olsen from Mascuda. That's one thing that uh, we've noticed all season is that some of the guards really get in some rebound action and so yeah. on. Big men are There's stepping out. Another three by Marshall Moore is off the mark. He's 0 for 2 from behind the arc. We got a foul. Not sure who it's on yet, John. Looks like it's on Mascuda. That's going to go on Lemuel, his first. Well, he's not going to be bashful about putting hands uh, where sometimes they don't need to go. But yeah. uh, that one uh, just was more than hands. It was a whole body as he's trying to establish position for the rebound. I agree. Ferris is uh, a physical kid down there, and you got to kind of live and die with the body down there. When, uh... Offensive foul on Triad. That was Mercenier going strong into the bucket. So Lemuel makes up for the foul down the end by drawing a charge. Good job by him getting down, keeping his head in the game. That's right. Barbour had uh, had a clear shot to the basket, uh, but the last instant he looked up, and there's nothing but a big Ferris Lemuel in the way. That's Barber's first. That's Triad's first one foul apiece on both Triad and Mascuda in the early going here. Altman brings the ball up, and it's over. Kenny, uh, Timmy Parks checks into the game from Mascuda. Nelson on the left wing for three. No good. Rebound Triad. We're 0 for 3 from the arc, and like I said before the game, John, we got to knock some of those down. Right, yeah, Mercer on that rebound, kicks it back out to the little point guard, number 10. Now that would be Lucas Criley. Three ball from Cole Moss, who's checked into the game for Triad. It's no good. Rebound to Mascuda and Timmy Parks. Picks up his dribble, looks for help to Oltman at the top of the key. Oltman dribbles into the lane. Nowhere to go with it. Back down inside to Kane. A nice pass. Inside, Kane battles. The King battles his way inside. Misses the layup. Rebound to Triad. He might have got bumped, but, you know, there's three or four guys around the basket there. I think it's a good no call. Yeah, it was. Triad's going to take a timeout. And uh, Mr. Felax, again, making his presence known on, uh, on defense. Boy, he's, uh, he's already got two boards and uh, not that many possessions. Yeah, he's a big body, huh? timeout by Triad. They take a 30-second timeout for Sam Drake. And Sam Drake's a guy that knows how to coach this game, John. He's, he's been around the block a little bit. He was at Edwardsville for eight years. Uh, spent one year as the head girls coach at Taylorville High School, and then he's been at Triad now for a few years, and uh, he's won a lot of games there. Yeah, he uh, brings a lot, of, uh, a lot of coaching experience to this young, uh, young squad, and has been successful uh, the previous four years with uh, bringing home conference championships to the Triad Knights. He did mention before the game that he thought his kids' effort all year long had been pretty good. He just haven't been able to string together a lot of wins in a row, and I think uh, it's contagious. And he's, like he said, he thought maybe at times, you know, uh, it's guys expecting other guys to do the work, and, uh, you know, he's hoping to have some guys step up tonight. Felix down on the post with a nice jump hook for two. That was, well, that was a nice, it was pretty sweet looking, wasn't it? Nice bucket. A little one hand over yeah. the, uh, the Mosquito big men. Parks at the top of the key, calls the play. Nelson down to Oldman, back to Nelson. Up and the ball's blocked by Felix, and again, Felix gets his hands on the basketball. There we go. How about that? Steal by Mascuda and Oldman to the basket, and a foul. Good job by Mascuda. Turning Triad over and getting a quick 
Look at the basket and we're fouled. I believe the foul is going to go on triad. Matt Mersinger. It's his first. Team second. Oatman at the line for two. First one's good. Yeah, AO made that. Uh, Alex Oatman made that, uh, that play by uh, uh, breaking up a screen attempt, taking the ball away, and then feeding uh, Nelson on the way to the bucket. Jordan Deese back into the game for Triad, as is Cal Miller. Oatman misses the second rebound to Triad. We're going the other way. This is Deese at the point, covered by Nelson. Nelson gets a piece of it out of bounds. Good job with his hands. Yeah, you know, I think Mosquito guards, especially by playing with high energy, they, they really start to get their hands on those passing lanes and so on and really disrupts the other team's offense. It's, it's best if they can do that way out on that front court, uh, stop that uh, that half-court offense from really uh, starting, to, starting to gel. Yeah, one thing about Oatman and uh, Nelson, maybe not the biggest guys uh, as far as the backcourt is concerned, but they're pesky and they'll get after the basketball. Right wing to Miller. Back to the top of the key and then back to Miller. Left wing and then up to Felax at the top of the key. Probably not where they want to have him most of the night, Jim. Or Jim. Sorry, John. A lot of hustle on the baseline from some of the smaller players out there. That'll be Oltman, number 10, from Mascuda. Tried to save it uh, by uh, throwing it back off of a triad player, but uh, stepped out of bounds in the process. Triad will be inbounding on the baseline. It's good hustle by Oatman, nevertheless. Cole Moss controls the ball out top. Dribbles covered by Parks over to the wing. This is Miller. Down to Felax. Up, no good. Rebound, Alex King out to Oatman on the wing. Good job by Mesquita. Good defensive stand there. And here we go, Oatman into the lane. Kicks it back out to Parks on the right wing. Down to Jalen Nelson. Nelson is fouled by 25, Cal Miller. That's the first on Miller. Third team foul on Triad. And Mascuda will inbound with Jalen Nelson. Down to Marsha Moore, to King, then out to Nelson. Moore, another three. No good. He's 0 for 3 from there. Jalen Nelson with a really nice rebound and move inside. That's a nice bucket by the young man. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. As a matter of fact, it's almost roll reversal. We got the 6'5 guy for shooting it from the perimeter. And uh, we got a 5'10 guard pulling it off the glass and uh, finishing the job underneath. Great job with pressure by Mascuda. Turns try it over again. I'll tell you, that was just good hustle. Oldman comes down on the baseline there to disrupt the pass, and it's out of bounds. But that was set up by some pressure down here on the press by Mascuda. Really yeah. good job trapping Triad in their own end. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, that's uh, one thing that Mascuda just really excels at is feeding off each other. Uh, somebody makes a good play, and uh, somebody else is right there with them. They don't want to be left behind the pack. It's a competitive group. It's a competitive group. There's some good young kids. Uh, a lot of these guys will be back next year. Oatman directing traffic up top as he always does. Out to Parks at the wing. Looks to shoot and then pulls back. Back to Oatman. They reset. Over to Parks. Marshall Moore is begging for the ball down inside. Back out to Parks for three and it's good. There we go. Parks from another zip code on that one, wasn't he? He, <laughs> yeah, he must have been 25 feet. Well, he likes that out there, and he's not afraid to shoot at that nope. for sure. Here's Marshall Moore with a steal going the other way off the rebound. He settles down, gets the ball down inside to King. King up and in. Nice move under the basket for Alex King. There we go. Mr. Another timeout for Triad. And Mascuda has jumped out to a 10-4 lead after really no scoring for quite a few uh, few possessions there, John. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things I noticed on that one, Scotty, when Moore was hustling down the ball, he was pushing it pretty hard. Uh, you might have expected him to pull up. He's already taken three from around the arc and stuff, and I think the defense stepped out, which left King open underneath. Got a sweet feed from uh, Marshall, and then uh, it was uh, automatic from that point. Yeah, nice job by King using his body down low in front of two guys. And Going up with a basket. With a minute 36 left in the first quarter, Mascuda's up 10-4, and this is exactly what they wanted to do, John. 
uh, and talking to uh, Coach Reynolds before the game, they were his main concern was Triad getting an early lead and slowing the pace down. The Indians want to play fast tonight. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. As a matter of fact, uh, they are, they're having some pretty efficient possessions too, and they've uh, uh, actually they're they're shooting uh, much better than 50 percent from the field at this point. If they can keep that up. Uh, they're going to be uh, they're going to be a threat to take this game, uh, put it in the win column. Yeah, Mascuda still has not gone uh, has not committed a personal foul. I think we noted one earlier on Lemieux. I think he turned it over. It was not a foul. That was a turnover earlier. So we stand corrected. It's three team fouls on Triad and none on Mascuda. Triad controls the ball in their half of the court. Oltman meets the ball at mid court, and now Triad gains possession in the half court. Lucas Crowley controls the point. Back out to Polanski, who's entered the game. Now it's in, and we've got a foul. It's going to be on Mascuda. I think on uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nelson on that one. Uh, you know, I'm uh, watching it from our perspective up here. Crowley from Triad and Oltman from Mascuda. Uh, they're they're almost uh, carbon copies as far as uh, uh, effort energy out there, and they're really uh, really good at directing each other's offense. Yeah, it'll be a good matchup to watch all night, I think. Ball inside to Felix on the tip play, really really nice effort there by Felix over the top of well designed play, just couldn't finish. Now Marshall Moore goes the other way in the lane, a lot of contact, no call, and a great bucket by Marshall Moore. Good job taking the ball inside. You bet. That's it was. what he needs to do. You bet you know, it was. He's, he's Hopefully not giving up on the outside. And here we got a score yeah, from Triad, Triad as goes well. Comes way. back and answers. Uncontested, the scooter didn't get back. But nice job again by Moore, taking the ball into the lane. That's what he needs to do. Uses that flood system to get inside. He's 0 for 3 from the arc. He's done some good things inside. Here he is back out top, Moore. He's dribbling around from the elbow. He takes a jumper, no good. Rebound the mule, just hard work down low. Puts it back up, misses. Rebound Triad, and that's the... Uh, that's the effort we talked about from the mule. You got to live and die with him down there. He does a great job getting an offensive rebound. Just misses the mark on the putback. That's right. You know, a lot of people see these uh, these big guys right under the basket, missing bunnies and stuff like that. But uh, there's not not a real easy shot underneath the bucket when you got uh, when you got two other big men from the other uh, wearing a different color uniform trying to stop you from putting it in. Yeah, I think if you talk to Coach. Uh, uh, Reynolds and even Coach Medvick who works with the bigs down there. I think, uh, you know, they'll take what they get from the mule. He's got his high energy down there. He's going to certainly cause some problems. Uh, and, 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 you know, when he gets in a little bit of a groove and gets going, he really can help out offensively. So, you know, I think, it's, it's like I said, you live and die with a guy like him, and uh, eventually the tides are going to turn. Dryad controls it up top. Jordan Deese at the point. Over to Criley. Deese inside. Down in his contact at the buzzer. No call. I like the no call. Two guys going up strong, and uh, uh, Triad misses the mark. The Indians with a 12-6 lead after one, and uh, you know a good first quarter from Mascuda. Yeah, it certainly was. It was an efficient first quarter as far as possessions and uh, they, the way they were able to convert some points on those possessions and so on. Uh, nice job on the boards, too, by both the bigs and the littles for Mascuda. Yeah. One thing I'll say about Triad, you know, coming into the game tonight with a 5-19 and record, 1-7 and in the MVC, and I, and I think overall the MVC, they're – there really isn't a dominant team, but if you look at their schedule, when you look at both these teams' schedules, certainly they, uh, they, they've been tested with some good teams. Uh, you know, they played at Chantham Glenwood. They played Modern Day in, in, in Collinsville. They played in the Collinsville Tournament. They play at Centralia. I mean, this is a team that's played some, some good competition beyond the 3A uh, uh, level and really good 2A uh, uh, schools. And haven't had a whole lot of success, but if you're going to you're gonna – if you're going to make your own schedule, you might as well play people that uh, challenge you at the highest level, make you better for this time in the season and yeah. the postseason's near. Yeah, and that's exactly what Coach Drake has uh, tried to do. He's kind of jerry-rigged the schedule a little bit so that uh, it is tough here at the end. And, uh, you know, so all the, the wins at the end of the season are a lot more valuable for that reason that the teams are tougher. And also, uh, you know, you propel, propel yourself in the postseason with a real successive, uh, yeah. uh, successful uh, uh Contest uh, for just preceding it. Well, let's not let's not discount Mascuda's schedule. They're playing Belleville East at Mount Vernon, Centralia, Altoff, Tutopolis, and then just a uh, shootout game against Robinson, who's ranked in the state. So they don't play an easy schedule either. Both these teams are battle tested. There we go. Well, that was a lazy pass uh, across court by Mr. Parks, and uh, Triad uh, ended up uh, converting it on the takeaway, and uh, it took them two shots to get it in, but uh, they got two points out of it. Again. 
Turnovers will kill you, especially when you're playing with a lead. And it, I, I, evidently, uh, you know, Triad certainly good with their hands on defense right now. Open was high off the glass on that one. I thought it was going to drop myself. It had a good angle. Scramble for the though. ball on the court. Parks comes up with it. There's a foul on Triad, a late reach in. That's going to go on Lucas Criley. That's his first. That's Triad's 14th foul. And I, and I think Triad's been active on defense, and I think the loose balls early were going to scoot his way. Yeah. Uh, you know, now, now you see here early on, not the case, but we've got to maintain possession and, and really uh, move the basketball to keep them active hands away from us. Yeah, absolutely. Criley, uh, anywhere that ball gets in, uh, in his zone, he's like the ever-ready bunny. He doesn't stop. Oltman out to Parks, down to Jalen Nelson. Takes his time on the right wing. Back to Oltman. Oltman dribbles once and kicks to the right wing to Jalen Nelson. Have yet to get the ball inside on this possession. I think we need to get the ball to King. If we can down there, he's shown the ability to get inside and score when we do. Now Mascuda slowing the tempo down a little bit. As Oltman steps on the line, the ball goes back to Triad. I think Mascuda certainly more concerned with a good possession than they are uh, uh, a shot right now. At this yeah, point. sometimes uh, on that one you got to come away thinking, you know, maybe there was just too much passing without too much production on that one. And like I said, King was calling for the ball early, and uh, uh, evidently the guys up top didn't like what they saw. But it's 12-8 for Scuda, 6.20 left in the second quarter. And to the basket and a Criley. missed layup by Criley. And a foul going back the other way. Foul's going to go on Felix. That's his first. Yeah. Uh, as active as he is with his first foul here uh, early in the second quarter. Right. Crowley, uh just threaded the defense, I mean, uh, on that one and uh, got in and just uh, uh, didn't make the easier shot. Jalen Nelson with the ball on the right wing. He gets it to King at the top. King comes up and gets the ball back down to Nelson on the baseline. Back out to Parks. Parks is at the elbow, kicks back out. Oh, what a great feed inside from yep. Oltman to Alex King, and he's fouled. Great job by Oltman seeing the floor there, John. Yeah, he sure did. Uh, there was some nice passing. Both, uh, you know, a big man you expect to score underneath and so on, and uh, and we had that chance. It didn't happen on this particular possession, but uh, we're going to make some hay here at the free throw line. King makes the first, and that's the second foul on Felix pretty quickly here, John. And, and if, if Triad can't afford one thing, it's uh, it's their big man Felix in foul trouble. No, and he's having a seat right now. Think about it, I think. He has been impressive uh, down low to this point. And I have to think Mascuda needs to take advantage of him not in, not in the basketball game. Absolutely. And they are. They're putting a lot of pressure, pressure. on in the backcourt here. There's a long pass and nobody uh, back from Mascuda. An uncontested layup. For Miller, and I have to believe that's a blown assignment there, John. Yeah, yeah. We won't, hopefully won't see that again. It's like uh, somebody getting opened, uh, you know, way downfield for a football uh, quarterback. <laughs> Marshall Moore at the top of the key, over to Parks. Parks to Oatman inside, nice look inside. Back out and a look from three from downtown, no good. Rebound Moore, the putback is no good. And we're going the other way with Triad. This is Moss. Moss on the layup, and boy, there have been some missed layups in the first half, John, on both sides. Yes, there have, I tell you what. There's some, uh, nice a nice possession by Mascuda coming down. Uh, Triad was one and done at the other end, but uh, now Mascuda's back here. Hopefully they can recover from that last one, and uh, Marshall Moore's given a shot. Bounced about all over the backboard, the rim, did not drop. Yeah, I think that's a forced one there, John. We got, we've been able to get open looks when we're patient, and uh, that one there was forced, and certainly Marshall's got the ability to create his own shot. Not to take any away from that young man, but uh, you know, with the way King's been able to control things down low, and Oltman certainly uh, controlling things up top, I don't think that uh, that's the shot we're looking for in that position. Right, right, I agree. There's a steal by Oltman with great hands. Looks like some contact, but no call. He's controlling the other way in the dish to Parks. A double pump, and it's good for Mascuda. Parks with an athletic move, a double pump, and a finish. A great feed from Oltman. And Parks will go to the line to complete a three-point play. Nice work there down low. Yeah, that was some pretty hard contact, too. Nice body control by Mr. Parks as he goes up on the low post right side. 
banks it off the glass for two, and uh, we'll see if we can make a conventional three out of it here. Miss In and out. Tell you what, there's no doubt that uh, the young Parks has, has some athleticism, and uh, when he can exploit that, he, he needs to take advantage of it. He's got some things sometimes that uh, you just can't teach, and, and uh, I think he showed it on that last play. Yep, no doubt. Well, got some contact down here. Uh, yeah, yeah, Marshall got a little bit out of position. He got the outside. Uh, triad was on the inside. Marshall said, well, the rebound's going to be mine, but instead of the rebound, the foul was. Luke Kassenplug has checked into the game, and he's at the free throw line for two. And this is one of the young kids that uh, Coach Drake talked about. He's a junior and, and uh, certainly not in the starting lineup, but a kid that he's looking to get more playing time as they uh, get close to regionals and start thinking a little bit about 2014. This is the first in. That ball's no good, but an offensive rebound to Triad, and they control the ball back out top with Barber. Barber off the right side, and contact down low, and it's a charge on Triad and Jason Barber. Offensive foul, nice job by Mascuda. Yeah, that was nice. That was no flop on that one either. I mean, it was a hard charge all the way in, and uh, uh, there, at least there was a ball between their bodies. Mascuda's going to get possession, though, on that offensive foul. Mascuda up 16-10. 4-17 left in the second quarter. Fouls are 8-4, Triad. King at the elbow. Over to Parks. He controls on the left side. All the way across court to Jalen. Nelson back to Oltman at the top. Parks looking inside, just nothing doing down there yet. Oldman works the baseline down inside to King in a bucket. Good job by Oldman again, working the baseline inside to King, and King using his body, something that's been working so far. Yeah, that, uh, off that right uh, right baseline, uh, bringing it in to King, and he caught the ball and went up in one motion, and uh, it was two points. Another missed layup by Triad after they break the pressure. Good effort, out of bounds by King. It looks like we're staying here, though. Good effort by him. He tried to throw the ball off of the Triad uh, player and uh, it was a little late. I think his foot was on the line. Triad will inbound right in front of the student section and boy, that's an intimidating place to be tonight. Jeez. Yeah, it sure is. Carly's got the ball in the backcourt. He brings it up and the uh, Triad starts to set their offense again. Down inside to Mercier, and another missed layup, and boy, they are just struggling from inside the paint tonight. Yeah, that was uh, that had Gimme written all over it, and he just uh, I was surprised maybe how open he was. Norn Burns has checked in for Mascuda, Andy Norn Burns. Another motor guy, John, a guy that will bring a lot of energy down there and mix it up around the basket. It uh, uh, seems to either go with he or, or uh, Lemuel in there when they need an extra boost. Oldman doing a nice job getting the ball inside on the give and go. Back out to Norm Burns. Norm Burns for the eight footer. No good. Rebound, Mercinger, Triad. The Scooter doing a better job getting back on the press now, John. Yeah, they sure are. Controlled by Mercinger up top. Scott, I see a lot of dribbling and not much passing on the uh, Triad offense, actually. Well, they're, they're feel, their big man Felix on the bench, they look a little uh, less in sync. Not, you know, they've already struggled as it is around the basket. Right. Certainly without their, their go-to guy inside, they're going to struggle even more. And, uh, you know, uh, Coach Drake's really got to be thinking about when to, when to get him back in the game with two fouls. It's tough. I know. Here we go. We've got a little over two minutes to go. Mascuta's still up by eight, and uh, now's the time to play smart. Unfortunately for Mascuta, too, we've missed our share of uh, – things around the bucket or this game could be out of reach already but you know Triad's hanging around with uh, good defense and uh, Mosquito not quite capitalizing. Here's King inside and okay. he misses inside and that's just something yep. that's got to fall for us certainly next week when we get into regional play. Yep uh, but did you notice on that one uh, he went with the left hand on that one which is going to give the defense something to think about. They're not going to be able to play him on his right anymore. That's a good point John. Uh, a good job by King with a different look. Ball's controlled by Triad. They try to get it down inside, and King swats it out of bounds and will stay the same direction. 
It is. I tell you what, uh, you know, if a scooter can't get a body in there, they're at least going to try to get a hand up in that passing lane. It's been real successful so so far in disrupting a lot of the offensive flow for the Knights. Yeah, it, it appears Coach Drake's going to keep Felix out of the game for the rest of the half, and uh, certainly he's got good reason for that. Uh, triad attempts a three. That was Moss. It was no good. The Indians come back with the ball. Oatman controls it at about midcourt. He slows it down. He gives it to Jalen Albert on the right wing. Back out to Oatman. He's controlling things. Triad not coming out to guard parts yet. And as they do, it's back over to Oatman. Oatman redirects the offense. And we restart. Back down to Oatman on the baseline. This is where he's been effective tonight. Giving the ball to King and kick girls back out. To the free throw line with Parks, a leaner, no good. Ball is off Nornberg's head and into the triad. Cole Moss with the rebound. Uh, Nornberg just lost track of the ball there and couldn't find it. That's right, it was like a pachinko coming down, uh, hitting those high hands and heads and stuff like that. Comes down to one of the smaller players, number 30. Well, down to 20 seconds, and we'll see what Triad, if they've got any, another bullet in the chamber here. 18 to go in the half, 18-10 Mascuta. Triad controls left point. Seemingly waiting for one shot. Back out to Deese. Eight seconds to go. He's still up towards the M at midcourt. Now he dribbles right side. Back out to Moss. Moss is going to take a long three with two seconds. The putback by Triad. By Polanski, that was a good look, John. Uh, not, not the shot they wanted probably from the top of the key, but they had a decent look at the end to finish with two. Still no good, and that's kind of the story right now at halftime. Triad just not able to put the ball in the bucket from close range, and the, the Indians with an 18-10 to lead uh, at halftime, and no team really caught fire to this point. No, none at all, as a matter of fact. We've seen some good things, and we've seen some uh, things that I'm sure the coaches will be talking to the teams about during halftime and so on. For Mascuta, I think, uh, Scotty, what do you think? We're, we're pretty, been, been pretty strong on the glass. And uh, uh, Marsha Moore has uh, had a little bit of inside, a little bit of in, uh, outside inside game. But uh, the story might be, from my perspective, is a nice, uh, nice direction by the guards and also with the um, uh, uh, play of Alex King. I agree. Alex King certainly uh, making his money down low. I, I got to give a lot of credit to Alex Oatman. I think, I think where Oatman's really done a nice job, and you know, certainly. Uh, you or I, neither one of us are John Wood, and with our basketball knowledge, I think we'd be the first to admit. But what I see out of a guy like Oatman is, uh, you know, it, we weren't being able to get uh, much penetration from the top of the key. He started getting the ball down on the baseline, and he was really able to force the ball inside from there, and that's where we got some easy buckets. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and what, one thing I really like to see is the fact that um, uh, they're getting the ball down low to King, and he kicks it back out. I mean, he's got an inside-outside, and it really keeps the defense uh, having to play a little bit looser so that when he does get that ball inside, and uh, it's money sometime then when he can go up and, uh, and get two. Yeah, certainly I think, Cody, uh, Reynolds has to be happy in the first half. they got an eight-point lead. They're going to come out and uh, try to hold on to that for the second half, and uh, we'll see what happens. But coming up real soon here, uh, John and I will have a bit of a spring sports preview for you. We've got two spring coaches going to join us in the booth here. Uh, we will have uh, head men's baseball coach Don Eddy. Uh, but before that, we're going to visit with our – John will visit with our new uh, head women's softball coach here at Mascuta. Frank Evans, uh, we'll bring him back on here shortly, and we'll be right back here in a moment with the uh, Mascuta 2013 Spring Sports Preview. Folks, my pleasure to have with us today Coach Frank Evans, um, uh, newly appointed, well-deserved uh, head softball coach for the Muscoota Indians. Um, coach, uh, tell me a little bit about what expectations you have for the season this year. Well, hoping to uh, build, on, build on some younger talent. We've got a couple of seniors and a smatter of juniors, but we are really loaded with freshmen and sophomores, so we're hoping to put together you know, a base here where we can work for a couple of years. Okay, that's that's uh, obviously always a game plan. Uh, let's see, uh, how about your skill positions? Uh, let's start with the battery. That's where you always want to start in softball. Tell me about what you're going to have on the hill. Well, we 
got uh, several pitches working right now. Uh, Megan Rudolphy, uh, sophomore. We've got uh, Maddie Nicola, the freshman. Uh, we also have um, Peyton, Peyton Bridegroom, and she's also a freshman. Um, and Allie Shantz, she's a junior. Allie will be throwing a little bit too. So uh, we've got four kids that can throw, and um, you know, three of them are going to be here for quite a while. So the best part about it is, is that they all play positions too, as well as pitch. Well, great, great. Now I know that uh, you know you're always active uh, in the past. I know know that you've always been active with your squads in the off season. What have you guys been doing to get prepared for this one? Well, the girls have been hitting a couple times a week, and uh, really working on the, the pitches have been thrown a couple times a week and they've also been thrown on their own uh, some of them are involved in pitching lessons and stuff so they uh, they've been getting several opportunities to pitch how about uh, when uh, when's the first contest going to be for us we we'll open up March 12th against uh, Altoff okay. uh, Altoff uh, you know historically a pretty strong program but uh, you know historically Muscoota has too um, I know that we've always, uh, you know, been able to field a competitive uh, team out there, and uh, uh, I'm sure that you uh, expect to see the same this year. I just expect them to play hard. Uh, you know, that, that's what we're going to, that's our motto this year. You know, I, I want them to play with no fear, play hard. Mistakes are going to happen because we're young, and just not to worry about it. Just play through it, keep going, keep going, and, and keep pushing, and, and hustle makes up for a lot, you know. And, I'm hoping this year will make up for a lack of, uh, you know, older kids playing. So we'll see. Coach, we appreciate your time and good luck this year. All right, thank you very much. Okay, we're back here. This is Scott Battis uh, joining the broadcast again. And joining me now is our head baseball coach at Muscoota, Don Eddy. And Don, uh, we appreciate you coming by. And uh, well, you know, the one good thing about basketball winding down is baseball is about to start up. It's got to be an exciting time for you and your guys. Yeah, we're about a week away. Um, guys have been helping out with baseball camp for the little kids, and they've been talking about how ready they are to go. So hopefully the weather cooperates and we can get outside next week. Yeah, it's a good young group. I mean, you got a lot of guys back, and you know, just looking over your stuff from last year, certainly you got a, a couple of young arms returning with, you know, probably arguably your top two guys back on the mound, and uh, maybe a couple additions there that give you one of the formidable uh, uh, staffs. And, and we all know in high school baseball, I mean, it seems to me the team with the most arms wins. And uh, I think we uh, certainly have some guys on paper. What do you think uh, moving forward here that we can see out of these young kids? Oh yeah, I mean Zach and Ryan both got a lot of innings yesterday or last year along with Colin. So, you know, we're looking for them to improve and get better and they're a year stronger, a year bigger and uh, we're hoping they lead the way for us and um, we got a lot of guys that had a lot of innings last year and hoping they can fill in, but we should have a lot of competition and a lot of depth on the mound which will um, hopefully help us out. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, Zach everybody's going to talk obviously about uh, Zach and uh and Ryan Nettemeyer, who's committed to SIU Carbondale already. But, you know, you've got some other guys like Alex King, who's playing tonight, and just some other guys that have thrown innings that you certainly don't have to rely on those two guys all the time. No, I mean, our depth should definitely help us down the road. Uh, you know, we only had two seniors that were able to play last year, and um, neither one of them pitched. So everybody that pitched last year, we returned. So uh, hopefully that'll be one of our strengths this spring with everybody a year bigger and a year stronger and experience under their belt. Yeah, well, you know, and looking at your lineup coming back, I mean, certainly it's a little unpredictable. It's not fair to assess who's going to be where or, or who will even be your, your, your nine guys in your, in your batting lineup. But, you know, when you look at guys from last year, Lindsey coming back and, uh, you know, hitting 366 last year, leading your team. And then Pearson, 354. Machek Miles, 345. Mike Beaker, 324. And, I mean, you go down the list and you got – you know, six or seven of your guys who hit over 300 last year coming back into that lineup, you got to be excited as a coach, and I think the kids kind of feed off that too. I mean, there's nothing not to be excited about. Yeah. Oh, you know, same type thing. They've got a lot of at-bats returning from last year, and 
um, hopefully they can step up and do the job for us. Yeah, the one thing probably last year and in, in, in watching some of the games and probably you'd like to get better at, and I'm not sure there's anything you can do about it, is probably from a power standpoint, not a lot of home runs. I think that's across the board when you look at the stats in the area. Is there anything specific reason for that? Are the bats that much different now than they were? Is the pitching that much better? The bats make a major difference. Um, I mean, basically the sweet spot cut down to it's probably a third of what it was. Right. And that has cut down on the power numbers dramatically. But, you know, we had mostly younger kids last year. We only had, you know, again, we only had our two seniors. So we had younger kids, and they're all a year bigger and a year stronger. And hopefully also with their experience, um, you know, being some of them were a little bit overwhelmed last year when we faced guys number one and number two. And hopefully this year uh, with that experience, they, they'll be able to uh, contribute more this year. Yeah, awesome. Well, I know we're looking forward to it. you got a good young team, and uh, I know the expectations are always higher than you maybe want them to be as a coach. But you got a good team coming back. We're looking forward to watching them. Hopefully they can stay healthy and you can make a nice run. Yep, that's – thanks for having me. You bet, Don. Thanks. That's Don Eddy, head baseball coach of the Muscoota Indians, and they'll be in action uh, fairly quickly here as we wind down the basketball season. It's time to get out the balls and the gloves and the bats, and uh, that's always an exciting time as spring is near. So – Thanks to Don Eddy and uh, Frank Evans for joining us for our spring sports preview. We will be back with the second half action of the Muscoota Indians and the Triad Knights. Well, we're back uh, waiting for the second half to kick off again here, or a tip-off as it would be. Um, big man for the uh, Indians in the first half, uh, as we mentioned before, Mr. Alex King. Six points of the 18. He's got one-third of the output for the Indians. The ball's inbounded by a triad on the uh, midcourt. Passed out. Triad's working the ball between the circles. Passes off. Right wing underneath. The ball's on the floor. It's being, uh, and Oatman picks it up. A loose ball that he picked up. Now he's moving and going to set the offense as he comes up to the half court line. Parks controls on the left wing back over to Oatman. Oatman to ref traffic from the top of the key over to Parks. Again, King calling for the ball down low. Hasn't got an opportunity this half. Oatman tries to go inside there. Now King's under the basket, unable to get up inside. And now Moore with the ball up top. A little more pressure from Triad in this half. There's a perfect example of what Coach Reynolds talked about, Triad's ability to trap in the corners. But Mascuta's able to get the ball back. And we got a Triad player down here on their end. And a layup on the other side Mr. to Marshall Good. Moore. And now we're going to get a stoppage. 22 that is, is uh, Matt Mercer. Mercer. He's down and we hope he's okay. Yeah. Good it's sportsmanship by the Mosquito players to come over and help him out. He's uh, seems to just get his bell rung maybe a little bit. He, uh, he's a little dizzy. I think they're yeah. going to need to yeah. get him out. Hate to see that, John. I tell you what, uh, uh, ominous start to the half. Three turnovers. Uh, triad, Mosquito, and Triad again, and, uh, and then uh, uh, an injury. They're looking for something on the floor. I don't know if somebody lost a contact or what, but uh, Mersinger still appears to be a little dazed and a, certainly a little concern on, on their part with him. Our trainers have uh, come over to assist Coach Drake, and they're going to help him off the floor. But he certainly looks a little disoriented. Hopefully he's going to be okay. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, good hands with Kathy Webb. Uh, uh, what, a, what a great uh, young talent she is as far as an athletic trainer working for Rich Wager and Athletic Therapy Center who uh, – Works uh, at all the contests here at Mascuda. That wasn't good. Okay, both squads are coming back out. 
this time. Uh, yeah, it looks like his jaw, uh, you know, she's uh, moving his jaw around a little bit. Sometimes, you know, just like a boxer, you get one on the side of the jaw or something like that, and it, uh, it'll tingle those nerves. 6.53 to go, third quarter. It's 20 to 10, Mascuda. 10 point lead for the Indians. Mascuda with pressure and uh, collision. Uh, Alex King. Not sure, John. Uh, looked like both guys going for the ball. A little body on Oath. I'm not sure how you decide who to call that one on. And I'm not a, I'm not one to be on the officials. I just uh, sometimes. Yeah, one that could have gone either way. Yep. Uh, but they call it on, um, on Alex this time. Good pressure by Mascuda in the corner. Parks. Darts Barber. Over to Criley. Top of the key, Moss. Over to Deese. Felix back in the game, and certainly that's important for Triad. All the way to the cup is Jordan Deese for Triad. That's a two-point bucket. Yep. That pulls Triad within eight. Marshall Moore for three. Follows his shot. Rebound Triad. Again, John, we've been better when we've tried to maintain possession and get a good luck inside. That's probably too quick of a shot from the scooter. Yeah. Criley on, um, on that last shot for Triad that did not go and comes down uh, Alex King underneath our own board here uh, and uh, corrals that ball, cradles it, and uh, gets fouled. The scooter basketball. And, I, I, again, John, you know, uh, certainly it's enticing when you're open that quick to, to get a shot off, but that hasn't been the way we've – been successful tonight, you know, running the, uh, moving the ball around the horn and uh, getting a, getting something inside has been our kind of bread and butter, no matter whether it's the king or, or from the elbow, and that gives the Indians their 10-point lead back. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. Uh, king still uh, continuing to establish himself inside. Jason Barber underneath for a layup, and those are the shots that weren't falling in the first half, and if they're going to make those, uh, they're going to close the gap pretty quickly here on Mascuda. Yep, that's uh, Here's that's King up inside again. How about that? He has 10, and the Indians need to get the ball to Alex King. They need to feed the monster, that's right. Here's Alex uh, Oltman uh, kicks out to Parks, out to uh, Parks. from the arc, Bill. It'd be nice to see Parks heat it up again, wouldn't it? I'll tell you what, John. At eight point, Mascuda lead just got the 13 in a hurry. Yep, uh, Threeville, that'll do it for you. Tim Parks with the three. That's his eighth point of the night. Gets Mascuda to a 27 14 lead, 458 left in the third. Try it with a full timeout. John, it's, uh, you know, we got to visit with the uh, Coach Evans and Coach Eddie. At, at halftime there, and you know, there's just something nice about baseball season. It starts to get a little warmer outside. It's it's a different smell and a different atmosphere when you walk out of the house, right? Yeah, you're right. I tell you what, uh, it's just nice to be outside and and to uh, to be playing outside is uh, just added uh, added luxury on that. I for one, I you know, I wish uh, Frank a lot of luck. I don't know a whole lot about the state of the softball program as he takes it over. I really don't, but I do know the baseball team has a bright bright year ahead of them as long as they can stay healthy they got a great young arms um, and, and certainly um, a conference championship would be a, a great goal to accomplish but I think they got their sets high higher than that I do too I do too you know you always have to start you want to win your conference and so on and make some noise and make other people think about you rather than youth guys think about other people certainly try it'll be good in baseball again again they've you know, been very good the last couple of years. I know through a section, they've been to at least a sectional final and then they tripped to the state tournament in the last couple of years. So a talented group coming back for them. Here's Felax, top of the key for three. Big boy's going to take Boy, it that's outside. A, that's a new look and, uh, you know, that, down. that was a pretty sweet release and everything. And it was I, looking good all the way. I'll tell you what, if they ever needed a three-point bucket, that was it. How about Altman? He's like a little swamp inside right the now. King. There's, how about that? And there's Alex King. <laughs> With a nice bucket inside, and that young man is having a nice game for himself. That's his 12 points. Yeah, he sure is, I tell you what. And he banged off somebody to go. He worked hard for that one, uh, even though it was uh, underneath. Uh, it was not an easy underneath. That ball's out of bounds. I think that's off triad. Yes, sir. That ball's back to the Indians. Jordan Deese tried to bargain with the official to get that one his way, but it went off his knee and out of bounds. Great job defensively again, and nice quick hands by Oatman. 
you know, it's been a pretty uh, clean officiated game so far, not too much controversies at all and so on. And uh, uh, of course that sometimes changes those last three minutes, but right now Mascuta is uh, spreading out their lead. Jalen Nelson now try it, trying to get more pressure on the corners, which leaves Parks wide open underneath. There's a lot of contact and an offensive foul, and I think that's a good call, John. I do too, I do too. Uh, you know, uh, Timmy saw that from all the way on that left wing and, uh, and uh, put it on the ground twice, and uh, you know, it was airborne, and uh, I think was looking at the rim and not the defense. Yeah, he, he doesn't like set. it, and, and I know it's frustrating as a young man to go up there, but that's just something they're going to call. You know they're going to call right. it. You know that's what they're going to call, and uh, you can't really fault the young man for going up no. strong, but uh, the ball's going the other way. Felax at the top, and they've made an adjustment, obviously trying to get him out top, maybe to uh, make some noise from up there. Here's his second three of the half, and he's now one for two. In and out. In and out. And here goes more the other more. way. Out to King, who's out beyond the three-point arc. That's foreign territory to him tonight. Yeah, we want we want big men to play uh, big men, and we want little men to be uh, playing the little men game. And uh, sometimes when you try to reverse roles that way, like right now, uh, Felix almost gets the ball knocked away from him trying to dribble outside of the arc. Between the circles now, Scotty. Ball on the perimeter down to fit. Now Felix works inside. He takes a short jumper, 10-footer, no good. It looked good from the release. I thought it was good, but bounced off the rim, and we got a... Alternate possession here. Jump ball, it's going with Mascuda. Good job by Moore to tie that one up. And certainly, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention, look, you know, we don't know offensively what, we're, what, what these coaches are trying to do. From a coaching standpoint, we certainly have no business telling them what to do. But you certainly see what's working from our spot up here. And, uh, you know, with King inside, uh, really been tough to handle. Felax gave us fits early, just missed some close buckets. I look to see more of that as we move forward here in the second half. Yeah, and both coaches kind of alluded to that when we talked to him before the game, uh, especially Coach Drake at Triad. He said, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, he certainly is never going to fault the team for not trying hard, but sometimes, uh, you know, the skills don't match up to the expectations, and, uh, you know, that'll happen. Uh, it's, a, it's a growing process. Yeah, the guy's track record has spoken for himself in the league. I mean, you know, Triad, four conference championships in a row, and, uh, Certainly they've had a run on a few sports there, but uh, you know, every team goes through transition and obviously he's in the middle of those right now. Uh, I've got a hunch that they'll be fine. Yeah, I agree with you. Here comes Altman, boy, putting a tricky move at midcourt. Pistol peep move. Down to Jalen Nelson. Back out to Altman. At the point, he's down to Jalen, who comes all the way across to the other wing. The ball rotates back up. We got a contact in the middle of the court. Triad player laying on the ground. We got a foul on somebody. That's on Mascuda. Looks like it's on Marshall Moore. That's his third personal, John, and they may need to think about getting him a rest here. Looks like Coach Reynolds is going to keep him in the game. Third personal. That's the third team foul of the half from Mascuda. One team foul on Triad. Triad inbounds. 29-17, Mascuda, 240 left in the third. Tried to get the ball nice to Felix. Defense, nice defense by King. Now Felix made oh, there's a battle for the ball at midcourt. And That's right. Again, you know, I, I don't blame Triad for trying to pound it down into the big man. Right. Uh, Mascuda just had that well defended. Yeah, King knocked that one down and got on the floor after it, and Oatman came down and joined him there. It was like a uh, romper room, and uh, Oatman came up with the ball. Moore's flashing into the paint again, and now it's knocked away by Triad. Can't get sloppy with the basketball with a 12-point lead. Nope, uh, you know, a big lead means you just, uh, you know, have the luxury to think a little bit about what you're doing rather than have to just react and, uh, and do stuff on instinct. You you know, gotta play old, smart. The old cliche, act like it's always 0-0. Zero, zero. I know, it's a, I know it's, a, it's a funny concept, but at the end of the day, if you're not playing as hard as you were when it was tied, um, you could be in trouble fast. Right, and Scotty, you know, which uh, I don't know that there's a coach out there that hasn't told his team you got to win each quarter. Jalen Nelson looked to shoot, and then he penetrates in the lane, jump step, Backed it. What a nice that job by Oldman. Sweet. That was pretty sweet. Jalen Nelson gives the ball up to Oldman underneath. Oldman has the has the keenness to get it back to Jalen. Now Jalen oh, steals Nelson. the inbounds. And another two. And again, just in spurts, the Indians get out to another huge lead. That's right. It's Jalen Nelson versus the Triad Knights right now. 16-point lead. There's from Oldman from behind on the steal, and he's going in. Expected, feeds it back. Expect another timeout with a triad here. How about that? Timmy Parks comes in following Oatman's steal at half court. 
Oh, and just drops it back over his shoulder, a very pro pass, and uh, Parks finishes with two. Oh, and that's fast. We get uh, Mascuta pushes it to an 18-point lead, and then we get there a we three go. from Triad, probably what they needed in that situation, just to put the fire out a little bit. That was Polanski, and uh, you know, he, uh, sometime if you hit th uh, one three, uh, you, there's they, just like, uh, yeah. Just like some other things, they travel in pairs. He may be shooting the next one, too. Offensive foul on King, and hard to say uh, say there. But, you know, like I said before, I, you know, these, these charges, I think sometimes it's the, it's overcalled a bit, but you know what you're going to get. If you're going to barrel into a guy, and I think the officials, they really like to call that charge. It's a, yeah. ni it's a yeah. nice look for him. You know, and it, it, uh, it keeps the game uh, within a uh, you know, realm of sanity. Uh, speaking of that, we got Ferris and Well back in for King. So... Uh, uh, we'll see what happens at that point. Well, we don't have the fortune of an instant replay yet, John. They talked about getting us that soon, but we don't have it yet. So we'll just guess and say it was a good call. It was a good call. Here's a three for Triad. They missed that one. Oh, Ferris boy. seems to be tugged on underneath, but gets the rebound anyway. We're we out go. to open, and here we go the other way from Escuda. 35-20, 38 seconds to go in the third. Nice move by Oatman inside, off and no good. He inbounds it off the Triad player, then back off of Oatman, and we're going back to Triad. Well, it was, it was a great, yeah, it was a great yeah. idea. The Triad, uh, you know, it's athleticism. These young kids and stuff out here, they, uh, uh, there's no, there's no quit in them. Both sides of the ball that time. Oatman trying to throw it off the Triad player, and uh, the Triad right. player, you know, ricocheting it right back to uh, Alex, who was standing out of bounds. 35-20, 22 seconds to go. In the third quarter, Triad, another three top from the top of the key. It's there good. It is. Here we and go. That's his second. It's that name again. Yeah, that first. second one in, uh, in about a minute. Yeah, he's Six two. points, Ferris. And the mule the other way answers. That's a big answer from Mascuda. Seven seconds to go, 37-23. Mascuda, five to go. Top of the key, three to go. Two to the corner. Shot at the top, off balance. No good. The shot was too late by Cole Moss. Wouldn't have counted anyway. And After three... Quarters of play, Mascuda leads this one 37 to 23, and that was a quarter of spurts for Mascuda, John. You know, it, it really was, Scotty. I mean, there was a lot of flourish there. Uh, Mascuda got points in chunk, Jalen Nelson, and they come back. Polanski sack a couple of trays for the Knights. Yeah, that, and that really kept them in it. I mean, you take those two threes away, we got a 20-point game, and those, uh, you know, at least give them a breath here going into the fourth quarter. But right. 14-point lead for Mascuda, eight minutes remaining in this one, John. You know, that was a great third quarter for Mascuda. You know, and a lot of times that'll paint the, paint the uh, or at least, you know, stretch the canvas for the whole second half. But uh, I believe they had 19 points that quarter. Well, we said it earlier. I mean, the key for Mascuda is putting the ball in the bucket. And I know that sounds ridiculous. But the games that they've lost, throughout the season, a lot of times the defense has done their part. They just haven't been able to sink shots from all over the place. And whether it's close range jumpers, whether it's turning the ball over at the top of the key, or whether it's from the three point land, they just haven't been able to sink them and play good defense at the same time. And that's been their problem. And that's been the reason they haven't been able to, you know, link a lot of wins together. You know, nope. it's the lack right. of consistency in tonight. You know, they're finding ways to get points and spurts and that's why they got a big lead. That's right, you know, uh, we've only uh, uh, broke that 50 barrier four times this year. And uh, it looks like it's within reach tonight. We'll see what Coach Reynolds tries to do to kind of control the last quarter here. Felix from the top of the key for three, and I'll tell you what, the big boy's got a stroke from up there. Yeah, he's the real deal out there, isn't he? I mean, uh, you know, I almost rather see him out there because at least if he misses, he's not inside to rebound and knock people down. Open picks up his dribble, then over to Parks. Ferris Mew up at the top of the key. He does not look comfortable up there as he gets back down inside. Now I think they're going to call a foul on him. Yeah. See, that's Ferris. Ferris is uh, working hard, obviously, and, and just a little more contact than he's uh, allowed right there. But he's not as comfortable up there on top of the key for sure. Yeah, and, and I'm sure, you know, the coaches, uh, you know, are fine with that type of call too. It's going to keep things from getting out of hand. And uh, yeah. uh, and it was, it was a foul. I agree, and Reynolds takes him out quickly, settles him down. I don't blame Coach for that. Triad not controlling the ball. Here's Barber inside, off balance, good. That's a nice, nice bucket for the young junior. Yeah, he's uh, that was a pretty smooth move, curling around and uh, actually beating a big man inside. I think he got that one up over King. Oatman takes the ball back down to the baseline, dishes the King inside. King doesn't get a good handle on the ball there. That would have been a two-point conversion. Now he backs out and takes a probably an ill-advised three. Parks underneath with an what. offensive rebound, and great job by him on the offensive glass. 
Yeah, that was a pretty sweet rebound, and uh, 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 that was a pro-style play. He grabbed it off the glass and went straight back up. Didn't put the ball on the floor like you see a lot of kids try to do. Went back up, and he drug somebody up on his shoulder with him, but he got two out of it. Got an 11-point game, 39-28, Mascuda, 6.35 left. King leads the way from Mascuda with 12, but Parks also with his 12th point. Those two guys tonight leading the charge, and it's been no different all year. Oltman up top, probably where, the, where we want the ball right now. Controlling the game and the tempo. He takes it inside the lane, up, and it's good, but I don't think it's going to count. I think the foul's on the floor. Nice effort by Oltman. Uh, bucket did not count. Foul's on Criley, I think, was it not? Was on Criley. That's their second team foul and his second personal. Yeah. Now he and Ol Oltman uh, still impress me as being almost prototypes of each other. Yeah, here's Here comes. King to the bucket, uncontested. Oh, boy. oh, baby. And with the left hand all the way on the baseline. Felix looks to drive inside, misses the layup. King with a board, and we got a jump ball. It's our way again, Mascuta basketball. Looked like we might have got away with an over the back there, John. They called uh, the tie-up. Yep, yep. And Mascuta gets possession on the arrow. Try to apply full court pressure. Oltman working hard to get open. He's not open. We give it out to King. Back two parks through the legs, down the right side. Now he switches back to the left. Oldman at the top with two men on him. Parks at the top of the key over to Jalen Albert. There's no reason to rush a shot here, John. Nope, got to make the possession count. 13-point lead and a three by Marshall Moore, no good. Oh, it oh my out goodness. I tell it's you what. Shooters bounce for three. That's the first make of the night from outside the arc for him. And that puts the lead up to 16. I don't have a problem with that shot there, John. He's open. He's set up. The ball's down there in time. Great look, and the ball fall. Uh, the shot falls. Big three from Escuda. That's right. That's right. You know, and uh, and again, you know, make or miss. A big man shooting from the outside is going to pull that uh, defense out, loosen it up in middle uh, for the authentic big man game. The scooters lead back to 16 in a hurry. Triad with uh, dribble penetration. Back out top to Deese. He puts one up. I think they're going to call a travel. Well, yes, they are. Deese traveled inside. Good move by him. But you only get one and a half of those in this game, John. Yeah, yeah. You know, Moss and Deese both, uh, I mean, they're hard-nosed players and stuff like that. And they both uh, both want to go, go to the basket. Uh, and that time, uh, Deese's feet wanted to go a little bit faster than his body wanted to let him go. And I watched about four minutes of the NBA All-Star game last night, and I saw, I saw uh, uh, guys earning mileage points by the travel they were yeah, doing. Yeah, like Fred and Barney, yabba dabba do. go. Jalen Nelson for three, hey. and that's good, and the Indians are trying to put the game away here at the five-minute mark. There's 4.50 to go. It's 47-28 Indians, a 19-point lead from Escuda. Here's three. Felax trying to answer. It's no good. Rebounded by Marshall Moore, and we're going the other way, and John, no reason to hurry anything here. Nope, not at all, not at all. Coming down to four and a half minutes, and uh, a uh, 19 point lead and so on and both coaches said that uh, you know it was important for their teams to know how to play when the team was ahead. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have some wholesale substitutions here for Triad. I wouldn't be surprised if coach Reynolds went with some of his seniors that haven't gotten to play a whole lot all season. Right, right. There we go. Parks getting the ball between the circles. Going to give it back to Oltman now and set the offense. The scooter looks like they're getting into their spread set here. And an ill-advised pass just yeah. uncalled for at this point in the game. And back the other way for an easy two for Triad. That's Jordan Dees for two. Yeah, that's the second lazy pass that uh, Timmy Parks has thrown tonight. Uh, but he, uh, uh, mostly he's, he's gotten a lot of good ones, but those two lazy ones, and both of them have uh, turned up in the Triad Knights' hands. Yeah, Triad yet to have a guy in double figures. Felix leading the way for them with eight. Jordan Deese with four, and Polanski with six with his two three-pointers. They're milking that clock a little bit, and that's what they need to do. Marshall Moore for another three, and he said, hey, it's senior night. I'm going to fire away. 
There we go. Oatman in that passing lane. Here we go. Now it's King Pretty your way for an Pretty sweet. layup. 49-30, Mosquito. 3.08 to go. You know, I don't know uh, what coach doesn't like that to see a big man hustling down the, down the middle and taking that feed. Uh, and there's nothing going to stop him uh, between him and the bucket. Polanski again. Ball bobbled. Tipped by Mascuda. Back up. He's just uh, he's just outnumbered down there, John. He's well, I tell you, he he sure was. He was uh, two for two from, well, from he, Freeville. He, he's a five-seven sophomore and a pesky guy, a hard worker down there. It's just when you've got the Alex Kings of the world at six-four down there, and you're trying to body up with him, it's just mathematics doesn't work out there. No, no, it really doesn't. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, you learn from your mistakes, and um, uh, you know, coach is going to let him get out there and uh, and learn from him. Yeah. And as you see some substitutions here, Triad subbing in. Lucas Gibson comes into the game for the first time. The scooter checks in Matt Olson, the senior. Good for him to get some. Extra time here on senior okay. night. Okay. Lemuel inside. Yeah, very That's athletic. Great. Very athletic. It went down to the baseline to Oatman and kind of a hook pass, and Lemuel was on the on the block and uh, jumped. Answers with an open three. Polanski, that's his third three, ninth point. 51-33, and it's a matter of time here, John. Two minutes to go. 51-33 to Indians. Pretty good effort tonight by Mascuda, John. Absolutely. Certainly not a perfect game. Certainly. Absolutely. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, Scotty, that uh, 50 barrier has been broken again. Good for them. Probably something they needed heading, in, heading into the finale Friday night and then to uh, regional play next week where the Indians will travel to Centralia with the three seed. They'll take on Effingham. And it should hearts. be a good ball game. Physical, going to be a physical game, I'm sure. Uh, Effingham's got some big people that are going to throw against the Indians. And... Uh, uh, hopefully the Indians will stand there, uh, stand up to it. I'll tell you what, Triad, they head to Civic Memorial, and they're going to take on Jerseyville, a conference foe in their first-round game. And, you know, certainly somebody they're familiar with. You know, the performance tonight probably not with, uh, uh, what they wanted coming in here. And Coach Drake uh, talked about it before the game. But, look, uh, in Illinois, everybody gets in. That's so, right. That's uh, right. You know, they get, they get to play a first-round game with an opponent they're familiar with. A uh, chance to maybe make some noise down there now. Right. The the, the elephant in the room is uh, East St. Louis also travels to Bethalto to be in that regional, and Cahokia travels to Waterloo. Both those teams could meet here at Mascuda uh, in a sectional basketball game that would pack this place, John. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got uh, a couple of turnovers. Uh, one uh, big, uh, forced turnover. Uh, Cal Miller on the Knights uh, side uh, forced a turnover, and uh, uh, so Mas they've inbounded now. Um, in the backcourt, and uh, Scotty Balboa's bringing it up again. You know, one thing about Mascuda, let's not count them out. You know, they go to Centralia for their regional. Certainly Effingham, a winnable game. Um, you know, a team that struggled, as Mascuda has during, throughout the season. Um, Centralia, certainly the one seed in that regional and a good team, but Mascuda played them tough already once. Yes. Um, you know, and if we're, if we're knocking shots down, who knows? We get here, we may, have to, we may be able to... Uh, you know, roll the dice with an East St. Louis or Cahokia and see what happens. That's true. That's true. Actually, uh, uh, East St. Louis uh, had a couple of their top players sitting down as a uh, few contests this weekend, uh, but they still uh, still gave a great account of themselves. Yeah, they battled Edwardsville tough on Friday night. I was able to take that one in, and uh, that's a good basketball team. You know, losing your two best players um, with great issues and give them credit for, uh, you know, uh, sticking by the standard. But uh, you know, played a good Edwardsville team, a two-loss Edwardsville team, where both their losses are to Belleville East, who obviously one of the top-ranked teams in the state. You know, they battled them down to the wire. It was a ten-point game with eight minutes to go, and, and uh, you know, uh, when they're at full strength, I tell you what, they're tough to beat, fun to watch. You bet, you bet. Edwardsville's another team that if uh, people haven't had a chance to see play, a well-coached, uh, well-coached team who uh, can make a run. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing them in Belleville East and those teams battle it out in their sectional as well. You bet, you bet. Minute to go here, Mascuda with a 51-33 lead. We got MZ Dupre with the ball between the circles, gives it off to Moss. Olsen at the top. 
I'd like to see Olsen get a shot off here, John. Yeah, I would too. I would too. Try it takes the ball away from him. Coming down hard. Stops and pops from 12 feet. There's Barber underneath for two and good. He's a junior. He'll be back, and he's had a decent game. He sure has. Yeah. That's his sixth point, but he's been a physical guy getting into the lane, kind of a slasher. Like I said, he's their quarterback on the football team. The guy's an athletic kid, physical kid. He'll be, uh, he'll be a good player down the road here. Yep. Sean Manley is in. Here's Olsen for a long three. Patrick White loses control of the ball. Six seconds left. And with five seconds left, this one's going to end, John. Here's the last shot by Olsen at the buzzer. Oh, just grazed yeah. off the front of the rim, too, didn't it? Doesn't yeah. fall down, but the <laughs> final score from Mascuta. 51 to 35 Indians. And John, it's been fun, but you know, uh, closing this one up, uh, you know, what Mascuda needed to happen tonight is what happened. We needed to get a win no matter what happened. Uh, doesn't matter how beautiful, but it was, uh, uh, they did the things they needed to do at the end of the game to win. Certainly, like I said, it was not pretty, but they went on spurts that showed what they're capable of doing in short periods of time. I tell you what, uh, yeah, you put their best moments together and you'd have a highlight reel for, uh, for Mascuda. And, uh, you know, not to neglect anything the Knights did. They had, they had some sparkling uh, uh, performances too, especially from their big man. Uh, again, inside and outside for uh, Mr. Jordan Felax. But um, we're going to go ahead and close it out here for about uh, 30 seconds and uh, uh, get our closing together and we'll talk to you just in a moment. Okay, well we're back with you folks just for a wrap on this and uh, like uh, Scotty was saying, it was a, a, a very hard contested game and so on, but a clean clean game. It was uh, clean, cleanly played and cleanly called, don't you think Scotty? Oh, I think so. I mean, you know, like I said, we, 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 we talked to Coach Reynolds before the game, what do they need to accomplish tonight? Well, they need a win. They need a win and they need a win Friday. And uh, you know, uh, the guys you expected to Lead tonight led. I mean, uh, Alex King with 12 points down in the paint. I thought he did a nice job controlling the tempo down there, especially with Felax from Triad, who's had a good year to this point. Certainly he's physical, but, you know, King showed what he's able to do down there, and then Parks answered with 12 of his own. So you get 24 out of those two guys. And, you know, uh, Oltman, who, who led the team uh, coming in with 25 assists, certainly added to that total tonight with what I have down for eight more, uh, you know, give or take a couple. But, you know, he's, he's one of those guys where he probably doesn't show up a whole lot in the stat sheet all the time. But, you know, I just really, really thought it was impressive the way he, you know, from the beginning of the game, we weren't able to get a whole lot moving from the top of the circle. He established a presence down on the baseline and was able to work from there inside. I thought we took some shots early that probably were too quick. You know, let the guys control the ball to control it. He did a nice job getting the ball into King, getting it into Parks. Those guys put it in the hole and uh, you know, overall, uh, good performance by the Indians. Yeah, I think it was indeed. And as a matter of fact, uh, I had a little checklist based on our pregame conversation with Coach Reynolds. And he said, hey, he wants to see his team play hard with a purpose. And I think that we can both agree that they certainly did. Uh, also, they played some strong defense, especially off the glass. Um, and uh, like you mentioned uh, with, uh, with uh, Alex Oltman, uh, they had some great guard play. Uh, they were patient, patient on offense. They were patient enough. Uh, they worked, milked the clock on their possessions, and they were pretty effective, I think, on those. 
So altogether, um, a pretty successful senior night for the Mascuda Indians. Yeah, and I, one thing, I don't want to, you know, a senior Marshall Moore who's had a good year too, I don't want to forget him. He hit some big shots, you know. thought we talked earlier about how he maybe took some shots that he, threw, that he rushed a little early. But he really settled down later on and made some big shots and played really good defense at all using his length, you know. And, he, you know, when he uses his length, the big lanky frame, he's able to do some things. So right, uh, right. Well, I tell you what, um, it's uh, getting near the witching hour and so on. Uh, some of these kids have, uh, well, uh, athletics. Uh, these athletes have a trip home and they've got homework to do and so on. Uh, and the coaches need to uh, make sure that that happens as well. The, uh, we'd certainly like to be remiss if we didn't mention uh, or provide some uh, kudos to whoever made this possible tonight. And that would be uh, uh, Scott Doring and the IHSA uh, setting up the IHSA uh, televised, uh, computer televised system for us tonight. And uh, we hope to continue this uh, effort uh, with the other sports, especially as the spring rolls around. With uh, I was talking with Scott and, and with uh, the baseball and the softball. And uh, my goodness, uh, you know, we're not going to be uh, Vin Scully and, uh, or Mike Shannon or anything, but uh, we'll get out there and we'll have some fun doing it for yeah, you. Yeah, we will. I really had a good time tonight, John, and I'm glad we could bring it to the Indian fans that were able to tune in online. You know, this is, uh, like I said, this is the first what we hope is many. And, John, it's been fun, uh, you know, and uh, – you know, we'll see how this thing goes, but you may see here us again here as the season progresses. We got a sectional tournament back here. It'd be nice to call an Indians game in that uh, that part of the IHSA state tournament, wouldn't it? Yeah, it sure would. Well, Scotty, my pleasure. You bet. Uh, so long for everybody uh, from Mascuda. We will catch you at another time. A final score tonight uh, from Mascuda. We don't have the final score, do we, John? That's okay. Big win by the Indians. We will see everyone at another time. So long.